God, and, and this is our we think that uh, it's need of our church and need of our group here. And uh, I think we have been doing this book called the Power Discipling by Gordon Ferguson. So we have covered so far uh, three chapters. Okay. So last time we are here, we talked about one another relationships, and uh, and I think the one another relationship. Last time we talked about. I just want to show you a few scriptures that we we are focused on. Yeah, we are talking about a few of these scriptures. No, actually, in the Bible uh, has many one another relationships. We talk about confess, you know, to one another, sins to one another, instruct one another, teach, admonish one another, encourage one another daily, spur one another on to a love and goodness. I love one another, but we did not talk about submit to one another, forgive one another, okay? the many of them, okay? But we talk about a few practicals, and I uh, hope that uh, uh, you have used that. <laughs> I hope that we come here, it's not intellectual study, okay? Uh, I hope uh, it's practical lessons, uh, you know, that we learn the Bible, is meant for us to put in practice, you know, it's a relationship religion. It's not an intellectual religion. Christianity is a religion of relationships. Okay? So I hope that you really uh, use this, and then if you put it in practice, your life will really be enriched. You know, and will be able to grow. And then, we need to talk. You know, first, we talk about the you know first chapter talk about the principle, biblical principle, why we need discipling because the Jesus method and this is Jesus way. And we talk about one another relationship. And today we're gonna to move it forward to talk about being a disciple of Jesus. Okay? And being a disciple of Jesus. And uh, why you want to be a disciple, you know? Being a disciple it means Jesus is the focus. You now, being a disciple means what? You know, a lot of us here are from Asia culture, right? When I'm a little kid, I'm not sure like I like kung fu movie, right? Sifu, Sifu. If you choose me, I'm so happy. Thank you, thank you. I'll follow you wherever you go, right? This is a very Asian culture. We want to have Sifu, even in Jesus' time. You know, they also have that. Even three, four hundred years before Jesus' time, they have Socrates, his disciples, Plato, his disciples, Aristotle, they are all in Athens, okay? And this is three, four hundred years BC, and then right now, to Jesus' time, even Apostle Paul in Acts 22, verse 3. Can someone read that in Khmer? Yeah, <coughs> even in uh, Jesus' time, Apostle Paul, he is, uh, was a disciple of Gamaliel, who is a very famous uh, um, you know, teacher who is teaching the book of the law in the Pharisees environment. They are very deep into Bible study, very strong, you know. And then, um, yeah, and after that, you know what happened to, uh, to, 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 to the Apostle Paul, you know, before he was called Saul, when he's under, he's learning from Gamaliel. After he became Christian, he's following Barnabas, right? You know, and Jesus, and, and you know, he's always have someone to follow. This is a culture. John the Baptist, he has his group, okay? And he's preparing a way for Jesus, and Jesus also has his own group, you know, his group maybe is the inner, you know, the inner circle three, the twelve, the seven two, you know, the crowd, but he always has his followers, you know, this is being a disciple, you need to be a learner, you know, in order to learn, alright, and a lot of us, we, in the, I think in the, maybe we are influenced by American culture, the independence, we myself, I'm so smart, I don't need to learn from anyone. 
you know, I, I think of myself I'm so intelligent, but that is really not biblical, you know, and that is uh, really not a way that the Bible teaches for us to learn and to grow. The Bible is very different in how we can grow, how we can learn is through deciding, through learning from one another. And in John 15, 20, can someone read this? See, this is in John 15, you know, the teaching is, we will be like Jesus, we will be like our disciple, you know, whatever our disciple do, we follow. Whatever Jesus got, his disciples got as well. I mean, in Thomas, John 11, he said, let us also go that we may die with him, with Jesus. You know, you follow your, you know, your, your disciple to wherever, even to the point of death. In Matthew 26, Peter said, declared, even if all has to die, if I have to die, you know, I will never disown you. And the other disciple, what they do? They say the same. You know, that is the culture. You know, it's following your disciple. And we are following Jesus here. Okay, we are talking about being a follower of Jesus. And the book of John and the book of Luke have some very good okay, definition of what we mean by following Jesus. And two of them have very different uh, perspective. One of them, the book of John, is a perspective on relationships. And the perspective of Luke is a perspective on commitment. But they define what do you mean by being a follower of Jesus? You know, in three, in the book of John, there are three scriptures talk about what do you mean by being a disciple of Jesus. Sometimes we might want to improve our discipleship study. Use the book of John. Three scriptures covers almost everything. Almost the same thing that we talk about. You know, in here, let's see, John chapter 8, 31, 32. First, it's a relationship with Jesus Christ. John to who from white four times at Mona comes to see. No press so many times to the poor son of the lad I killed of him. My net or clean, no drop, no pit, no net or clean is such a man. You know, this scripture make it very clear. You know, uh, as a disciples when we study the Bible, I, I believe we all cover this scripture. You know, it's only when we are obedient to Jesus' teaching that His truth become known. Now, sometimes the disciples who became Christian for a long time, we forget about this. We forget about obeying all the one another scripture. We do we not put it in practice. You know, we don't really have friends, we don't really confess our sins, we don't get together with people, you know, and we forget about it. And we really, that's why we're not growing. If we really want to grow, this is the only way. The Bible is very clear. Unless we follow the Bible's way, we are not going to grow. Okay, God wants you to grow. God wants you to change, to be more like Christ. But the way is very clear in the Bible. Okay, we have to follow Jesus and obey his teaching. Imagine you learn all this one another relation, all this reciting we talked about last two months. I didn't do anything. Yeah. I don't need it. You know, I already know that. Well, you know, those people, I think, I'm not sure what they're going to do, actually. You know, I have no idea. But I'm very uh, excited, you know. I remember some brother that's very weak, don't come, got many jobs. And, and then, all they get with this brother, 
And can I say your name? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Only God will give one brother. You know, uh, always busy, always working. You know, how do you share his life? I was like this too. <laughs> always busy, always working. But God changed my mind, changed my heart. Because I need one another. You know, spending time beside and helping each other. More important than making a few more dollars. You know, yeah, making a, a few more you know, I mean, uh, money that, that, that you, you know, it's really totally worth it. And the brother, what do you think? He decided to, I think, he have changed his schedule and have much, much lesser, you know, job just so he can be committed to the church, you know. And it's awesome. You know, I met another brother, talked to him, oh, bro, uh, can you uh, pray for me? I, I might need to change my job because uh, I feel like uh, uh, I'm working too much because I'm, all my friends are, just graduate from university, all have good job money, and I just want to compete with them. I just look and I want to look at what they have. But I just really encourage him, you know, uh, we don't compete with each other. We are happy with what we have. You know, we, we are looking for other, you always have not enough. Always have not enough money. You know, you, have, you make $200, it's not enough. You make $2,000, it's not enough. You make two hundred thousand dollars. No, no, you make two million dollars. I mean, I talk about per month. Okay, it's still not enough. Okay, so it's not two hundred. It's not two thousand or two million per month you're making. It's it's you and God. Okay, it's you focusing on God and not comparing yourself. The brother said, oh, "Okay, okay." Yeah, I I I, I just pray for me. I, uh, I, I'm glad I see him here today. Amen. So I know people are changing, people are growing, but some of them just don't care. I don't want to show up. No matter if you call him, I'm busy, always busy. You know, if people are this, they 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 have a chance to hear about the word of God. They don't put the Bible in the practice. There's no way. There's no way they can change. There's no way they can grow. Only through following the word of God that we can grow and we can change. Okay? And do not expect everything that taught by Jesus to make sense unless you are willing to obey it. Another one is relationship with other disciples. And we talked about this scripture last time, right? So I want to read this again. John 30, 34, 35, this is. New command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Okay, you read the command. Okay, it's fine. We have a lot of English speaker here. Yeah, yeah, it's great, thank you. So, you know, the relationship you know, in body is very, very important. You know, if you do not love as Jesus did, if Jesus come here, so he say, oh, you are following me, you are my disciple, when he said that. This is Jesus' word. You know, the way you want to follow Jesus according to Jesus, not according to me, okay? not according to you, is that you have to love one another, not as you think, but as Jesus did. This is what Jesus said. Okay. So, if you don't agree, you have to talk to Jesus, you know. But this is actually what Jesus said, but are we serious about this teaching? Are we serious about this teaching? Are we spending time with people? Are we helping the weak? Are we calling each other the commitment? You know, are we loving one another? Oh, I'm so busy. I'm always. A, I think that last last Sunday, uh, Roland did a very good lesson. I, I feel very encouraged. You know, talk about remember your past, right? Remember God's blessing. Like something God blessed us so much. I'm too busy. God bless me. I'm sorry. I cannot come to church anymore. You know, I, I have two kids, three kids. Four jobs. So I'm so sorry. You know, I, I'm too blessed by God. Sorry, I have no time for you. <laughs> he said, "What well, ridiculous? You know what I mean? So ridiculous." But this is exactly what's happening to many people. 
And because they, 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 did not, they, they did not focus on God, they focused on the world. Okay? We have to focus on Jesus, to follow Jesus. Right? This is what Jesus said. Jesus wants us to love one another okay? as he has loved us. Let's put this into practice. Another with relationships you know, in the book of John. That show yourself to be disciple is what? It's John 15, 8. All these like, de like definition, okay, this is what the Bible says, how you become a disciple. I don't make it up, it's all directly from the Bible. We say how you be a disciple of Jesus Christ, okay? First, you know, and second is third. And it's John 15, 8. <laughs> Yeah, over here, you know, we talk about bearing much fruit, showing yourself to be Jesus' disciples. So, what do you mean by fruit? You know, a lot of people say, Oh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Great, awesome. If you have a fruit of the Holy Spirit, what is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? You know, uh, Galatians 5. 22, 23, is, is, you know, some of us might remember love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, all these things, yeah, and, and, and self-control. Well, but in the context, probably talking about the fruit of evangelistic fruit. So you can argue about that, okay, back and forth, back and forth. But if you were to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit, will you have not bearing fruit? Will you have not bad people study about you? Impossible. Okay? If you have a fruit of the Holy Spirit, you will be a fruit. Pretty sure. So however you interpret it, okay? You're gonna have much fruit. I mean in terms of evangelistic fruit too. Okay? So whatever you, you can take it. We have to bear much fruit to be we have to reach out to people. Do you have a personal Bible study? Do you reach out to people? Do you share a faith? Do I need to grab your hands? Please come and study the Bible. Please come and study. Sorry, too busy. Don't be care. This, this is actually what is happening right now. All right, I'm not exaggerating. I have a study for you. Please come. I'm too busy. This is exactly what's happening right now. How can you be a disciple if you're like this? I want you to take this seriously because this is what Jesus said. If you want to remain in Christ, you want to follow Jesus, you call yourself a Christian, you call yourself a disciple. Show yourself to be a disciple according to Jesus' word. Amen? Amen. Alright, next book. Look, it's not talking so much about relationship, but also talking about discipleship. Being a disciple of Jesus in terms of commitment. And Luke chapter 9, 22, 24. Can someone read this? Man voice. <laughs> and in English is fine. Yeah. <laughs> ហើយមានទូទៅថាត្រូវឲ្យគុណមនុស្សរងទុកជាច្រើនត្រូវពួកចាស់ទុំពួកសង្គ្រេសនិងពួកអាចារ្យបោះបងចោលត្រូវគេ
tell them, you know, they, they have difficulty accepting Jesus and falling to them. Jesus proceeded to tell them, you know, not only just to those few, but to them all. You know, that if you want to be my disciples, okay, you're confused. If you really still want to be my disciple after telling you, you how difficult my life's going to be, you know, if you still want to be a Christian, you have to take up the cross for you. You know, what does that mean? You know, a lot of people. My cross is my sickness. My cross is coming to church. My cross is studying about people. My cross is reading the Bible. You know, those are all wrong. Okay, those are a privilege. Okay, those are great things. You have Bible. Okay, you come to church, it's an awesome thing. That's not your cross. Okay, your sickness is just a sickness. Whether you are not sick or sick, it, 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 it's not Jesus, Jesus' cross. Okay, and why is Jesus' cross? You know, let's read another scripture. In, uh, Luke 14, 25 to 33. <laughs> 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 บ่ได้น่ามองให้ខ្ញុំ <coughs> ตามันอังกุยเลยโลกเมื่อจีมนเตไผ่ดำไว้ออดดึงสีมีหลมม่วงหนึ่งเพื่อบังหายบ้านคือหมดบ้านไกรเจ้าหน้าดักเชิงจ
or so on. So Pia, we give everything, driving a not so nice car, <laughs> whatever, you know, uh, living a small house. And then the salary is not that. It's for everyone. Yes, even your own life. Now Jesus, he lived it up, you know, in this example. We, of course, need to love our family. Being a Christian teaches me how to love my wife, love my kids, love people who are more difficult to love, to have more patience. Of course, I have a long way to go. You know, one of my weaknesses is probably I'm not very patient, okay? But <laughs> Jesus, at least have Jesus there to help me to see I have a long way to go, you know? And if I'm not a Christian, probably it even worse. Jesus, his example, you know, with his, uh, his mother and his brothers. Uh, someone read that. Mark 3, 31, 35. ដោយឈរនៅខាងក្រៅប្រើគេឲ្យទៅហាំងទូងវងមនុស្សដែលអង្គុយ <coughs> Imagine right now as I'm teaching this lesson. My dad came from Bangkok at the door and said, I'm crazy. And what Jesus did? They, 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 his, his, his mother and his brothers they said, they think he's crazy. And what, what did Jesus do? Send someone saying, Sorry, I, I, I'm busy right now. What? He didn't bother. He just leave them there. You know, he just living there. He's like, wow, are you rude? Jesus, are you teaching being rude? No, he's not. He's not that. Jesus loved his family. He spent a lot of time with him. Jesus delayed his ministry to start at 30 years old because he loved his family, taking care of their needs. He could have started much earlier if he wanted to. You know, he loved his family, take care of their needs. But he's focused on God's kingdom. God's church. That is his real family. That is eternity. You have to love God's kingdom. You have to be committed more than your own family. You know? And because of that, that family, Jesus' family, my mother and his brother, said, James wanted his brother to become the pillar, the church leader in Jerusalem. I believe not Peter of that. If Jesus don't stand up, stand firm in his faith, his brothers and sisters, and his family will not even make it. And they do not understand. We cannot be sentimental. A lot of times you're very sentimental about family, we kind of family situation. And we need to follow Jesus' example. I remember, you know, many of you know Stan Lee, right? He came here with the whole couple of years. I remember I went to Hong Kong. The church. He is a smart guy. I'm not that smart. He graduated from Harvard. You know, it's hard, difficult to get in there and graduate. You know, a lot of Asian family go to the United States already a big, you know, I mean, a big dream. And then your son go to Harvard University, even a bigger dream. And after graduate, you know what? It's probably about time to make money, right? But Dan Liu left the American dream, dream that his parents has given to him. Went to Hong Kong to start. Helped start Hong Kong church. I remember I was this one, you know, we were staying in the same house together. And uh, the mom and dad called his God greatness. <laughs> they're, they're really uh, crazy, you know, they're mad. But tell you, his love, okay, and his, what, his wife. And like at that time, it's not his wife, it's the singles. And then uh, they're all singles. They went to Hong Kong. It's the son God first, not family. 
Even in my own family, So Kun was asked to join the mission team in Hong Kong without finished college. And after I became a Christian Scotland, ask me again, do you want to go to Hong Kong church? Oh, sorry, I'm not sure. I'm just become Christian in less than a year. How can I go? You know, I already have my plan going to Rome, Italy. I'm studying architecture. You know, I already have all my plans. Oh, think about it. Asking a lot of advice, a lot of people say, wow, you should go. You know, it's because you speak Chinese. You go to Hong Kong. So as a disciple, I have to deny myself and, and go. You know, how my mom and dad feel? Left college, <laughs> haven't finished. Second son, tell him I'm not, I'm not finishing my college. I'm going to have mission team. You know what I mean? It's so difficult. You know, not easy. Not easy. But luckily, my mom and dad don't give me too much prescription. Just a little bit, okay? But, <laughs> but, uh, I'm so lucky. But we have to put God first. I'm so lucky okay, to be in Hong Kong. You know, last year, and the last year, they invite all the mission team went back. We saw thousands of people at the mission. No, but we did something little. I just go there and support. Only I am not even a leader. I'm not even a Bible child leader. I just support Scott being the leadership. I just bring my friends, being their friend. I sleep in university. I just hang out. You know, I didn't. I just just want to be a disciple. I have no I have no title. Not a Bible child leader. In one year in Hong Kong, God used my life. You know, I hope you will be used by God too. I'm just lucky to go there. You know, just lucky. To go there. What is your cross, Jesus? It's whatever is the hardest thing for you to do. For me, it's going to Hong Kong at the time. You know, Abraham and his younger was that is move out of Earth. After that. Abraham has moved again, you know, to the promised land. After he did move, that's hard, hard thing for him because he has a business. He has, you know, his establishment, he has companies, you know, and he has his staff. You know, he has his, his, his career. He has to move. After he moved, you know, he's not having a son. After having a son, is what? It's to sacrifice his son. It's always the hardest thing in your life. It's always the hardest thing in your life. That is your cross. Do you have a line in your life? I will become a Christian unless I have a husband, unless I have a wife. No, seriously, some of them left the church because I have no boyfriend or girlfriend. Seriously. You know, unless I have this job, unless I have this income, this, this income, unless I can keep this secret in my life. Do you have a line over there? Whatever line you have, that is your cross. The rich young ruler, ruler, his cross is his money. Okay, Jesus look at him and love him. All right, your cross. Sell everything you have. Hey, did Jesus need his money? No, Jesus needs his heart. He know that is his cross. What is your cross today? Okay. It could be anything. A lot of us is willingness, pride. You know, those are the things that will kill you. Not dealing with even sexual sins, impurity, not every confess. Those things will slowly eat you up. You have to cross your mind. You know, you need to take it up. You need to put it God first. You need to recommit yourself to being a disciple of Jesus. If you want to remain a disciple, okay, it's not because you're a member of a church, it's because you're obeying the word of Jesus. Jesus will come back to judge us according to his word, not according to you being a member of whatever church you belong to. Alright, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, you have to be a disciple according to what the Bible says. You, are you willing to go anywhere, do anything, give up everything, you know, to have that kind of heart? That's exactly, you know, I mean, when our church is growing all over the world at that time in the early 80s, 90s, I became Christian in the 80s, you know, that's exactly what we do. 
We went to Hong Kong, we went to Cambodia, we went to Thailand, we went to everywhere, you know, whatever. You know, whatever job you have, whatever career you have, whatever study you have, whatever, actually. You know, whatever position you have. Just whatever. Because you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Especially in the area of worldliness. Because this is tough. As a Christian, it's always tough. For me, my family, a businessman. Okay, I'm also a businessman. This is especially tough for me. Okay? I'm always facing difficult thing, thing about money, finance, and, and and because this is one area I'm struggling. God always testing me, again and again. I remember when I was. Uh, Singles. I invested in the restaurant business and did not work well. As a young entrepreneur, I'm very prideful. I thought I can do it by myself. So I bought all my shares from my partners. I think, oh, I can do it, you know? And it's just a big failure. I lose a lot, a lot of money. What can I do? Close down. And I still don't want, don't want to cut off my investment because it's a lot of investment that time. Okay, that is about maybe 15 years ago. So uh, I feel like, oh, I can maybe restart into a business. This time, because of my worldliness, I restart into a. Can you imagine I do a nightclub? A DJ? Can you imagine I'm a nightclub owner? <laughs> Okay? I was a nightclub owner because of the money issue. I don't want to lose that money. The woman there and the girls and I thought I want to have a clean nightclub. Drink wine. <laughs> oh. Clean. I got into so much trouble. I got into some sexual uh, you know, temptation or sins and oh luckily I was even the nightclub God did not bless it, I still failed. Okay. I still have to close it down. That time I feel so terrible. I look at my restaurant, look at my nightclub, it just didn't do well. I don't understand what is going on today. I was like, wow, but thank you God, thank you God, let me go bankrupt that time. No, because you're saving my souls. You know, you're saving my money. That time I thought, wow, this money, actually I was, you know, calculate today in Cambodia, people need to take 50 years to make a living, you know, to pay what I lost that time, you know. And, and, and I thought that is a huge, but God has blessed me today a lot more than that. Okay? I'm so thankful, so thankful that I lost that money. I go back because I have to save myself, not my money. I hope you have that kind of heart. Okay? Not because you need two jobs, three jobs, have a bigger house, a nicer car, you know, to be a disciple. No, you cannot do that. You are destroying your life with those things. You're literally destroying your life with those kind of things. You cannot do that. You have to put God first. Are you a disciple? Link up the definition that you found in John and look. Okay, this is what the Bible defines you as a disciple of Jesus. You can do this, actually. Literally, do this in the discipleship study if you want. You don't need to go, you know, you know similar scripture. Great, enough said about being disciple, you know, focus on Jesus. And why discipling being discipled is so important. And I want to cover up this very quickly. Because it keeps us focused on imitating Jesus. In 1 John 2, 5, 6, can someone read that? ແລະຫນ້າແດ່ຕາມເພິ່ນຄືຕົງວິ່ງນຸກປະກອບຊີສຄືໂດຍສະເດງຫນຶ່ງໃຫ້ໄດ້ຢືນເດີນຄານຍ
important thing for us being disciples, we need to imitate Jesus. We need to ask ourselves a question. What will Jesus do in this situation? You know, a lot of times we have this quick fix. You know, do this, do that, do this, do that. But exactly what will Jesus do? You know, a lot of us, after becoming Christian for a, 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 a little, you know, a, a while, especially after three, four years, six, seven years, or 10, 15 years, you know, we, we start to slow down. You know, we start to slow down to, to grow because uh, we, we keep growing, especially people who think they are leader or they are actually leader, you know. They, they don't think they, they need to grow. But who are they comparing it? They comparing from to, to our past? Okay, great, awesome. You have grown so much in the past. You know, you struggle with that right now. Amen. You know, and I think the problem is we are comparing ourselves with others. The Bible says we cannot compare ourselves to others. The only one we can compare to being a disciple of Jesus is who? Is Jesus himself. If we compare ourselves with another brother or sister in this room or other places, you always feel good about yourself no matter where you are spiritually. You, know, you cannot do that. That is a, a growth killer. You know, the Bible clearly says you cannot compare yourself with another. You know, I think it is 2 Corinthians 5. You cannot compare. No, we need to always grow. We need to always focus on being like Jesus. You know, there's a you know here. Uh, uh, I think there's a list of things that that in this book I think he talked about what we can grow to be like Jesus. In many areas, you know, we talk about humility of Jesus, prayer of Jesus, uh, those whom Jesus touch, um, what make Jesus frustrated. What if Jesus never had come? All these things, you know. Jesus as the door, the vine, the light, the teacher, the Lamb of God. You know, difficult, different reaction to Jesus, unexpected reaction to Jesus. All this kind of thing. What would Jesus do? Do you know what Jesus do when he faced your situation? You know, when he faced your mom and dad, when he faced persecution, when he faced your boss, when he faced your employee. What would Jesus do when he faced this temptation? What would Jesus do? You know, you think about it. All right, what would Jesus do? That's important. Asking that question. And discipling will keep us focused not only to be like Jesus, it also keep us focused on the mission of Jesus. In Luke 10, 17, no, 9, yeah, chapter 9 and chapter 10. Can you read these two verses, someone? <coughs> You know, it's so easy for us to lose our focus on evangelism. It's so easy for us to take time to be easy because it's very difficult to share our faith. It's very difficult, you know, to always keep this focus. You know, even in Jesus' time, when the disciples just send it out, you know, send it, send the disciples out, you know, to to preach. You now they, they they have to report back to Jesus. Jesus has accountability. He sent out seven and two. Same thing. They come back and tell Jesus what's going. On. And Jesus teach them. You know, tell them, oh, you shouldn't be happy because you live there because I'm thinking. You know, so you need accountability. All right. Without accountability, without discipling, it's hard. Without the, the accountability in discipling us. It's hard for us to focus on the mission. You know, right now we're standing by with somebody. Hey, I thought his brother. Hey, bro, how are you? Did you forget to study? Yeah, I'm sorry, I knew mean, I did. <laughs> you know, maybe next time I don't. You know, we need. It. You know, sometimes we do that. All right, we we need that. We need that kind of input. You know, sometimes we do forget. We're too busy. I forgot. You know, we're not focused. You know, yeah. So why we need accountability? In schools, we need a teacher, we have a company, did you send in a homework, you did uh, jobs, sports, no, I run a company, no, companies in Thailand, I don't live there, I need to have accountability if my staff will send me my report. But what's going on? Why don't you send me the report? It's like, no problem, easy going. No, because it's important, the result, the more important result, the more important accountability is. If you really care about the result, 
you care care about your accountability. Unless you don't care. Okay? If you don't care about helping people, if you don't care about the company, how it goes. I don't care about you can tell me you know how many shows up, what's my sales, what's the figure? You know, I don't care. I don't need to know. But because I care, I want to know. Alright? I want to know what's happening. Do you care about people who become a Christian? Do you want to know? When someone asks you, how is your evangelism? How many people have you reached out to? Have you get together with people who stand in Bible? Will you be grateful or will you be angry? It, it, it shows your heart. Okay? Are you a disciple? If you are angry because people ask you to want to be accountable, you need to repent and change. Because you're not having a heart of Jesus. Okay? Here, we need to follow Jesus. We need that accountability. I need that accountability. We need each other. You know? I'm grateful. You know, I have friends. The other day we studied Bible people. I mean, uh, one time came, Tyrone came, who else came? Me. Uh, you came, <laughs> MJ came. You know, we have a group study, you know, we have two, two studies, you know, someone who learn about the Bible. I think we're going to continue to do that. We have each other, encourage each other. You know, imagine nobody come, I just come by myself. I can also do it, actually, I can do it. But it's just. This is kind of like sad, all right? This, this is not fun. It's great to see someone do it together, all right? Another, you know, why is it important? Because discipling protect us from Satan. Can someone read Hebrews 3.13? This one scripture that we uh, talked about last time, too. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so important. We need to be encouraged on the daily basis. Mm -hmm. And he don't say it one time. He say as soon as called, uh, as long as it's called today. Make sure you understood it today, okay? But we really literally read it at monthly or weekly, okay? We and we we. Practically, we do that too. And that is basically, we are purposely disobeying God's scripture. When we do that, you know what? Our church will not grow. That's exactly where our church is at right now. Because we are not putting this into practice. Remember, you know, Roland talked about church history. Our, our church history last uh, applet, it reminded me, you know, very, uh, it's just a godly principle. How our church has start from the Church of Christ, you know, tradition has got to become a disciple ministry in Gainesville, Florida, you know, in the 60s, 70s, where a lot of people, you know, because of discipling relationship, because that principle of one and another relationship, God had blessed that group all over America, the campus ministry. And because they're young, they're excited, they're totally committed, you know, but they're a little bit prideful. The Church of Christ cut off their finances, they went down. Okay. They have their own sins too, even though you're blessed by God, you have their own sins, you know. And then, you know, that group went to, you know, and there's a small church in Boston, and it was a struggling church too, you know, and the time they invited Kit and Alita McKean, you know, another young campus minister to come to help, and from that group, God has blessed to grow, and bringing the discipling Principle from Gainesville, Florida, to from America, from just only America, the campus ministry, to all over the world. Literally, from that group, we have church here in Phnom Penh, we have church in Bangkok, we have church in Hong Kong and China. You know, but because of lack of discipling, even the church leader, the top guy, Kim McKean, lack of church. Even you are the most spiritual can still live the church without openness and discipline. Very important. Look at King David, a man after, after God's own heart. When he has a good friendship with Jonathan, do you think he found the sins of the, the, the last room? Probably they have a good talk, you know. 
their spiritual talk, confesses sins to each other, help each other out. Only when Jonathan died, when he don't have that friendship, even with a, such a good heart, he still fall into those sins because of lack of discipline. No matter where you're at spiritually, young or old or very spiritual, without lack of one another relationship, you're going to kill yourself spiritually. And our church history is a good proof of that. <coughs> Once we put that into practice, our church grow. Once you stop putting in practice, our church stop. You see, crystal clear. This is God's method. Crystal clear. If you want your church to grow, if you want your ministry to grow, you have to have one another relationship. This is godly principle. No other way. You can talk all you want, you can teach all you want, you can encourage all you want. Without putting this practice, you will not grow. That's why it's so important. We need to bring back disciple relationships. I remember last few days when uh, who is it? Uh, Roland was here to talk about formative discipline versus corrective discipline. We talk about church discipline. We don't want to go to ICU, okay? People are dying and then you have those corrective discipline. You want to have formative. Okay, you have a discipling relationship, you come to Devo, you go to church, you know, you, you, you need that. Okay, you need the one another. Put it in practice. You need the one another on a daily basis. I, I don't want to make it legalistic. But this is what we need to do. All right. One of the way that we are able to protect ourselves from Satan is just by getting ourselves into the light. You know, in the discipling relationship, we can, dis uh, you know, we can confess our sin sins to one another. You know, who are you going to confess the sins to if the person is not close to you? Impossible. There's no way. There is no way, all right? You can only confess your sins, intimate sins, to the one you're close to. You need to have a desire for relationship. And that is the way you get out of the control of Satan. Because Satan is in the dark. You know, we need to be open to each other. When you are able to confess and talk to one another about in an intimate level in this way, you know, how wonderful that is. You know, a lot of time, you know, I, I fall into sins, I fall into different kinds of lust or whatever thing, or worldliness or, or, or bitterness, or, you know, when we talk about it, someone, you know, we confess it, they want to deal with it. You know, we just, just even just confessing, it haven't changed totally yet. You, you, you kind of like, wow, there's a light, light switch, you know, from darkness to light. You know, you feel like, wow, this is amazing, you know, that's amazing how Satan can be, you know, will run away from us when we start being open about ourselves. All right. So we need discipline, need discipline to protect us from Satan. And then one last thing about discipling is it builds our character. Ephesians 4:22 to 24. You know, when we're studying the Bible to become a Christian, we definitely we have to deal with our sins, right? Or else you won't be here. You know, masturbation, pornography, you know, uh, lying, gambling, drunkenness. You know, those things that you have to really cut off, right? Uh, I hope you, you cut it off. You know, a lot of us have victories in those areas. Amen. 
Those are actually not so easy to, to, to change. But the more difficult one actually is not those things. It's your character. The thing you learn from your little kid. You're selfish, you're prideful, you know, this kind of thing. Are a lot harder. Okay? It doesn't mean that you repent, you know, and the next day you, you, you're totally unselfish, you know, I mean, you're like Jesus 100%. You know? you know, you're still a selfish person. Because you are brought up in that environment, or you, your, your your tendency, your character. So when, or you, I, I, or you are not gentle. You know, for me, I'm not a very gentle guy. So my wife always remind me. Tonight is a very difficult lesson. Remember to be gentle. I try, I try. It's this difficult lesson, you know. It's a tough lesson. I'm not sure how to be gentle. I try, you know. So it always remind me, you know, to be gentle, you know. And, and even if it's not a sin, you know, even if it's not a sin, if it makes you more effective, will you change? Will you change? Will you open to grow in your character without discipling? How can you grow in your character? Even if you try, it's still difficult. You know, even if you try, it's difficult. You know, there's Abdakas out there, you know, one of our, you know, many, some of us know him. He said this is very, very, you know, really uh, a, a definition about discipling is really good. You know, he said discipling is gentle pressure, relentlessly applied. You have to apply it. It's not heavy handed, it's not harsh, but it's gently telling you the same thing again and again. Unless, until, you know, you change to be more like Christ. Discipleship or battleship? Sometimes we try to help someone. It's like fighting a battle. I'm not just going to help you be like Jesus. I'm not going to fight with you, okay? Uh, this, this is not my point. Because sometimes a lot of uh, time, we help, help someone to, to grow in something, change something, because it's not being cooperative, because it's not being prideful. We're trying to say something a little bit, you know, I mean, a little bit sensitive to his character. You get really, really angry very quickly and easily. You know, it's like fighting a battle. No, I'm not going to fight your battle. I'm just going to help you. Are you open to that? You know, just now I was playing golf, practicing before I come. Right? I saw Sotie, you know, uh, the Chinese uncle. He told me, well, today I just went to the competition. I won the competition today. No, he did not say that. He's number one in Cambodia. Wow, it's awesome. Amen. He said, well, Sotie, can you uh, can, can I swing a few a few swing? Can you, uh, you have any comments on my swing? Yeah, I do, I do. I do have comments. Maybe you, you shouldn't use a risk, but you need to really swing through like this. Uh, okay, he showed me a few swing, and then I, I do it. What do you think? Better. I, I'm grateful. Okay, I'm grateful for people pointing out my mistake, even my golf swings. How about your character? Are you grateful for people calling you out? You know. Yeah, are you are you grateful to be like Jesus? Unless you have a heart to be like Jesus, when people tell you what you need to change, you will become angry. All right, you have to make that commitment. Without that commitment, no one can help you. Or you need to be disciple yourself first. Then we can help you to become to grow to be like Jesus. Without discipleship, even King David become a dangerous man. Even I myself will become a dangerous man. Even the top leader here will become a dangerous man. If we don't decide. I hope you take it seriously. I hope you have a dream to see this church to grow, to change. Because we love God and we want disciples. Because this is an ingredient that will help the church and will grow the church. Amen. Christian, 
basically give you everything. Your mother, your father, your sibling, your son, your job, your whatever you're proud of about yourself or anything. That's not important, but Jesus, to me, is very uh, challenging. I don't know about you, <laughs> um, <coughs> but it is very true. It, those, it is not, Jesus did not say, uh, accept. <laughs> there is no exception, there is no condition. I, I think, um, for me, that's a very important scripture. I think when we uh, really give, you know, God first, God will bless us a lot, a lot more. You know, it's like, you know, when I give up my restaurant, it's like God bless me a lot more, you know. Even if God don't bless me with money, but I still need to put God first, right? Then I cannot say, unless God bless me with more money, I will be appreciated. <laughs> I cannot do that, okay? So it's not in terms of the world, you know, we, do, we are not preaching the health and wealth gospel here. Okay? Those churches, you, you go to the United States, there are ten and thousands of people. Okay, they are huge. But we are not preaching those gospel because Jesus did not preach that. You know, we don't do that. Okay. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Yeah. I just have to say today is a lot of points, yeah, but I, I learned a lot that uh, maybe it's difficult to process. But what I really like and see from the first uh, Midweek until now, and try to practice to each other, spend time with the sister. And what is very clear, we see in the improve, like in the relationship. How to say when we see each other like this and talk a bit, is how to say we can be friends, but the relationship cannot cannot grow up. It's a, to say the connection cannot improve. But after I spend time with some sister, like I think. Only one time I can feel something change in the relationship. Like, uh, okay, Rani, almost every week, is, we grow up in the relationship. We, 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 we enjoy to talk, we know each other, we know a strong and weak, both way, even a road. We just spend time one time, but I feel a lot, like uh, for in, in, the, in the feeling, in the, how to say, when we talk, we know each other, we feel closer, right? And a lot of sisters that they used to spend time, when you also, yes, I think it's really important that you try to the lesson and God and the Word help us why the important about each other. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if no spend time, if no time together, everything cannot happen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, there were two points that really stood out to me. Um, the first one that really stuck with me was um, it. You were talking about. Um, oh, hold on! I just lost my mind. Okay, talking about um, taking up your cross and how. Um, how it really comes down to what is the most difficult thing in your life for you right now and how that will always change in your life like you're using the example of Abraham and how in each step of his life like there was a new hardest thing and um, I think reading that scripture for me it's easy to think about okay like when I first decided to make Jesus Lord of my life what was the most difficult thing but now thinking about my life now, okay, what's the most difficult thing for me now? What what do I need to do to take up my cross today? Like, what's the hardest thing for me? Um, and the second thing I really liked was uh, the point about um, how discipling can protect us from Satan. And I think that is just so powerful because I think so often we forget what Satan's doing in our lives and how he is so actively trying to just tear everything down and destroy our relationships. Like he wants to destroy this church and he's doing so many things, just little small things every single day um, to do that. And just really thinking that, wow, discipling and just having someone that you can share all of your sin with and you can share your struggles with, like that is such a powerful tool against him. Um, so thank you for sharing those things. That really encouraged me. 
Too shy, you want to share, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, you know. Uh, anyway, I know this is a lot of things to think about, okay? And some of us, I think, may have some repentance to do, okay? Especially in terms of discipling relationships. And uh, your own personal commitment to God, you have to wrestle yourself, you know, because this is all from the Bible, you know, how you be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And then I uh, hope you will encourage today, you know, by the word of Jesus. I believe Jesus will love you. And God will love you. Okay, and then He wants you to be disciple. You want your life to be blessed by Him. That's why He teach you about all this thing. You know, if you don't put God first, if Jesus is not if not the Lord, He's not the Lord at all. Okay, you cannot have you know, a little bit Lord of Jesus Christ. You know, it's either He's the Lord of your life or not, not the Lord at all. So I hope that Jesus wants to control your life because He loves you, not that He's just a controlling person, okay? <laughs> God is not a controlling person at all because He wants to bless you. Alright, I hope you take this lesson as, uh, into your heart and, and uh, let's go throughout the week. We talk about this and how we can help each other to be like Jesus. And next week, I think we still have a Devo by uh, on our own, right? So uh, next next week. Uh, we split by Bible talk, but uh, since we don't have really have Bible talk, I'm suggesting uh, next week we uh, split uh, men and women. You know, so uh, we can uh, in a smaller group setting, we can talk through all the lessons we will talk about. I think last two lessons, you know, about uh, the principle of beside the biblical principle is very important, and uh, you know, and one another relationship also very important. <coughs> Today also very well. It's all the lessons important, you know. They are, they're all very basic because they're all basic. So, so they're all important. Let's talk about those things. And then let's not take it lightly because all these are very important lessons and very basic. And I hope you really grow from that. Okay, maybe next week you can have a D group, you know, with the men and the D group with the women. You can do whatever size you want. You can talk about it later. All right? And the men, maybe uh, we'll talk about it later when you're going to meet Friday or Saturday. Okay, that's it for today, and we still have some drinks, and you can hang out. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank you.